political roundup on Chinese television. Here are your top political stories this time. Fair, credible elections can best be guaranteed with appropriate deployment of technology. This is the experience of 2015, adjudged to be the best election ever conducted in the history of this country. I've said it over and over and over that this commission will not experiment, will rather consolidate. Technology has come to stay. Not only will the PVCs and the card readers remain, but we are going to go a step higher to see if we can also deploy technology for collation and transmission of results. Thank you for staying with us and welcome back. Well, the program today has been two ways. Of course, we've talked about uh, the Abia rerun election and some of the rerun elections that we are expecting this weekend. There is no doubt the nation needs a miracle out of its present economic and political doldrum. But which way out exactly? Obafemi Awolo's legacy often comes to play when issues of free education, true federalism, and all the rest come to play. Who is this man? Well, let me give you an idea of uh, who he is. Obafemi Awolo, a uh, man uh, who was said to have uh, founded the Egbe Omo Ududua. Uh, and also, he founded the Action Group in 1951. He was a first leader of government, business, minister of local government and finance. Uh, Bafemi Aulowo also was a first uh, premier of the Western region in 1954. As the leader of the opposition in the federal parliament at that time, and that uh, led to uh, up to about 1963, but the chairman of the Unity Party of Nigeria and also stood for election as a presidential candidate of that party. He retired from politics in the termination uh, of the Second Republic. He died over 70 years of age um, and uh, he's almost 30 years now that he's died. I take a look at some of his achievements as a politician, nationalist, of course, uh, a pioneer free primary education and free health care programs in the Western region. He also is known for implementing the first minimum wage policy by a Nigerian government at any level. Of course, anybody will remember the Western region and, of course, some of the agriculture, uh, uh, the economic, the educational efforts that he made. He was also known to have established the first television station uh, service in Africa called the WNTV and the first Nigerian university, the University of Ibadan. Well, just yesterday, some eminent Nigerians uh, met, uh, some Nigerians met uh, in uh, it is home country uh, we had to discuss the issues of his legacies and what he means for Nigeria, especially at this time. A serene country home of the late sage and outstanding nationalist, lawyer and politician, Chief Obafemi Awolowo. 30 years since the death of the former premier of the Western region. The reason these dignitaries and eminent Nigerians from the private and public sectors have converged here. Some of the speakers, in their own way, describe what Chief Awolo means to Nigeria. Chief Awolo was rightly regarded as a giant in his lifetime. At his death, a Nobel laureate eulogized him as one tree that made a forest. For a man who has become an icon of good governance, sound political ideology, an advocate of education and economic development, the subject of the conversation here perhaps makes a great deal of no economic revolution has ever succeeded or will ever succeed, whether green or otherwise, which does not give prime of place to the full development of man. This goes back to education again. So it is in that point. If you don't develop through education, you don't get economic development. And as he profiling some of the very first steps toward economic recovery, the co-founder bring back our girls, Dr. Obi Esekwesili, suggests an economic conference. The conversation that should happen should be different. It should be a discussion of the economic productivity 
of Nigeria from the premise of each region. Each region takes its own economic agenda to that conversation. And through economy, we enter into what political structure will best serve us. After all said, a 12-point communique was issued after the event. The foundation is asking Southwest leaders to close ranks to enhance the region's economic development and they're also calling for the practice of a true federalism. Well, that's it there. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of issues will come to the fore when you're talking about Obafemi Awolowo, issues of regional autonomy, issues of how you can make the region work, and of course, the issue of true federalism. Don't forget, at that time during uh, the, 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 the reign of the time when it was premier of the Western region, a lot of lessons in terms of how viable agriculture was in the region of course the lessons from all the region and these are moments where the issue of cocoa the of granite where products that you can easily take and export materials out of nigeria but those are becoming uh old stories now because it's now what we are planning to go back to after the oil boom has taken our attention away from agriculture and oil price you know what it is globally now has dipped low and low and one of the reasons why economically things are becoming so hard and uh, economic summits is what uh, someone like dr isaquesili is asking for where we can sit down and think uh, on what exactly we can do as a nation federalism another major issue well those are some of the legacies and lessons to, to learn, especially at this critical time. Many thanks for staying with us. But well, that's our package on the program tonight. It's been a pleasure having your company all the way. On behalf of the team here, the production crew here at China's television headquarters, uh, it's a uh, thank you to you. I'm Shane Wakimale. Bye for now.